Rad. Robot Alchemic Drive, a PS2 game unique in the fact that you control a giant 50 foot tall destructive robot that you control using a PS2 controller. Yeah. In this universe, anything that travels in space will be destroyed by the Space Nectar, a poison that kills all organic life that travels through space. But if that's the case, then how are we invaded by giant robot aliens? Well, because they're not piloted, manually at least, by alien creatures called the Volgara, using what they call the Phantom System to teleport their robots to our planet. Now, from what I read, this game is heavily inspired by Mazinger Z. Just from looking at the robot designs alone, you can kind of see it. Me personally, I see a lot of die guard from what the story brings, but I'll get into that later. But in all honesty, take any robot anime about defending Earth from alien threats, and you pretty much got what this game wants. Giant flying robots like Robotech to giant tanks, and even big O with drill arms. This game lives and breathes off of anime tropes. You are the chairman of a now bankrupt company, and of course, a high school student. Now you get to pick from three separate students. You can play as Simone, Seto Kaiba in a business suit, and your anime waifu of choice. The story doesn't change much no matter who you pick. So whatever you choose leads to the real choice, picking your robot. While you do get to play as all three throughout the campaign, your choices will be from the Mega Knight Vivelle, Airborne Dominator Legoli, and Galang the Castle Keep, all fulfilling different roles in combat. Vivelle is your close range specialist, has the most skills in the game designed around close range combat, special punches, What he is very limited on is his mobility compared to the others. Lenguil is your fighter jet, able to fly past most of the city, even dodging some attacks because he's still in the air, being the lightest and fastest, and doing but doing the least amount of damage with his punches. He struggles to knock down with very few special attacks, and also has very few offensive options. Because he's the most mobile on any defensive mission or level where you have to get across a city quickly to defend a key objective, he's your guy. Glang is your heavy hitter in every sense of the word, even with a sledgehammer for an arm attachment, using his arsenal of long range weaponry to devastate his enemy if it ever hits. While slow moving as your heavy, he can transform into a tank form. While heavily destructible towards the city, it is very mobile. Good for open areas, or if you're really good at driving down the street without ramming into every single building. Now, gameplay. For better or worse, it is really unique. One of the unique on the most unique on the PS2. Because you control your player character the entire time through your normal running and jumping, jumping, with a gravity device attached to you so you can fly to better positions. But why would you want to get into a better position, you ask? Well, since you control your 50 foot tall destructor like an RC car, you will need to see the fight. Because you control your giant robot with L1, R1, R2, and L2. To walk, you use L1 and R1 alternating to walk forward, L2 and R2 to back. Turn, you hold L1 and L2 for left. You can even duck by holding L2 and R2. Well, why would you want to walk this way? Well, well, why is the walking like this, you ask? Well, because 
You use the sticks to throw punches like a fight knife. Pushing forward to get jabs, swinging hooks, uppercuts, by going far to the left and to the inside, doing uppercuts, doing chopping motions. And yes, it's very complicated and it you do have to get a feel for it after a long time. And yeah, you hear that and you think, that sounds very complicated. And you're right, it, it never really becomes intuitive. Over time you get the feeling like you are getting it, right? But then it'll just be a weird step or you'll bump into a building and watch it crash to the ground. And because of all this, it's a little awkward to be throwing punches because you're always just not in the right position to see what you're trying to throw. Because you can't step exactly where you need to be, you're not turned in the right angle to see if it'll connect. You're always a little short or maybe you're just walking into the Volgara just rubbing your face against him as you swing a hook past his head. It's kind of a clusterfuck. Not always, but when it happens, it leads to some dumb stuff. And don't forget, there's long range attacks as well. for the same reasons except even more increased stomp because of the fact that you might not be standing at the right height. Maybe the guy's shorter than you. But because of all this, hitting your supers is so satisfying. <laughs> Honestly, the biggest problem with this game is getting used to the jankiness of the controls. But that's what makes it so charming, honestly. Walking on top of a house, punching a robot through a skyscraper, even though you should be saving it. So it makes this game memorable. Ah! Now let's talk about this weird story. What's the matter? The robots were the real Volgara. I never even considered it. It's the truth. I very much doubt if they even consider themselves to be invaders. They probably came upon this planet and found it to be infested with pests. Us. I can't believe it. The Volgara, they're so different from us. Different from humans? But was that always the case? Perhaps they are the future of humankind. Okay, never mind. So let's just talk about the mission structure. Alright, we'll talk about the story. The story does everything that you would think a mecha anime based in the early 90s and 2000s, early 2000s would be. From having a harem of anime waifus, having douchebag rivals, the cool alternate pilot, even having an Ava 1 freakout. Then becoming real, true friends with your giant robot. The only thing that will beat the Volgara is the power of friendship. 
I can't believe it! While we were fighting, the Meganite said over and over, Never give up. We will win, it said over and over. Now for as generic and sometimes bad as the story gets, there is a decent amount of work to establish characters from your childhood friend in the now, whose grandmother is violently killed in the first alien attack. I've put her to bed for the time being. It's severe fatigue. She seems to be driving herself too hard. Figures. To Elena Bullnose, your ex-fiance, who left everything to become a part of the evacuation team, saving people where they where you can. You! Sukioka's son! That's right. Asukioka and your former fiance. Yeah, we were engaged a long time ago. The sole heiress of the bullnose conglomerate. Why are you here? I bailed out a bullnose. Now I'm with the EGG. But you're next in line to succeed the family empire. Our broken engagement didn't have anything to do with it, did it? Huh? That's got nothing to do with it. Our engagement was broken off because you, Sukiyokas, went broke. That's your problem. Anyway, you have to haul out of here right now. No, I'm supposed to be here. Huh? Then there's my favorite. The BNN field reporter. Eric, but the hospital won't admit me. They say they have no room. But I'm injured. I have the right to proper bed care. This is live from the sea. The foundation's robber, but it's struggling against the Bogara warlord. It seems unable to hit the enemy, which appears and disappears as if it were a ghost. Will the Foundation's robot go down in defeat without ever striking the Spectro enemy? She even gets her own little arc while surviving through some of the worst attacks in the game and covering them. With all of their help, you fight against an unstoppable mecha invasion that is trying to wipe out all of humanity. You see where I say this is obsessed with its anime tropes? At least the game seems to know it. If you're just playing to complete this game, you want to get all your armor upgrades, but <laughs> where's the fun in that? When you can do some stupid shit like this. That's where the real fun of this game is. Seeing all the Power Ranger level attacks, coming out of drill arms, ejecting from your arm chest. That's what the real fun of this game is, is seeing all the Power Ranger level attacks. How do you get upgrades you ask? Well, as the game progresses, the government gives you grants, paying you money, billions of dollars, to protect the city, especially some of the major landmarks. 
and you get a bigger cut, depending on which buildings you're defending. And the more you protect, the more money you get towards the end of each episode or mission. And you even get a $10 billion bonus if you protect everything. It's a little easier on the open maps, but hey. Now after a while, you start to get into... There is a moment in the game where you just... You start to get the feel for it, right? You're stepping in with your left and right hooks. You're throwing those combos, hitting them with a couple jabs and hitting them with an uppercut. Doing combos after you sweep a guy's legs up and throw them in the air. Even learning how to turn while walking, which doesn't sound like something very hard to do. But once you start getting the feel of it, it, it really starts maximizing how far you can go to protect some of these places that are on the other side of town. And that's all important because as the game progresses, you begin to get challenges. Like fighting with certain types of robots. Or one of my favorites was when the Galang has a malfunction and can't transform back into its robot form. Transformation system malfunction. Glang can't go to vertical mode. Malfunction? Of all times! It can't be here. Chairman, you have to battle in fortress mode. So you have to just fire guns into this thing. And then when you run out of ammunition, you have to start chucking grenades at it. Or when your gravity or when your gravity device breaks, and you're stuck on top of a building while there's a poison attack underneath you destroying the city. And you have to control your robot from across the city while standing on top of this building. Jamming devices that you must destroy so you can actually control your Mega Knight. Or, after a certain level, you can just ride on top of them because you need to be within 20 feet to be able to control it. So you just kind of take the gamble and hope you don't get hit. But then it even starts throwing more challenges at you, like multiple fights with multiple enemies at once. And even, of course, being an anime-style game, The Four Warlords. Is this game great? Fuck no. But is a game based off a of giant mecha anime from the early 90s and 2000s? In the best ways, down to the convoluted and stupid story, their anime waifus, goofy stances, straight up Power Ranger style finishers, to the awkward way you control the game. It's easily one of those games that if you're up for the weird gameplay, bad voice acting, and all around weird Japanese jank, a game you can just bring out and have a good time with, then this is the type of game you want to play. I mean really, what's stopping you from just emulating? If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Look in the description below, and you can subscribe to my BitChute, or if you're on BitChute, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Game over.